It's Eclipse Day, baby. All right. Got everybody coming on in. Pino's in the house. What's up, everybody? Coming on in for the eclipse, the sort of eclipse. It is cloudy. It's not only cloudy here. Well, the sun's peeking through. Poking me right now. I'm going to see my sunglasses. Um, here in Southern California, my dear friend Brian Cable and member of the Akashic Academy who's here, too. He's got. He's the one with the good equipment. <laughs> to, to broadcast for us and it is thunderstorming in missouri yeah like, what is up with what is up with the weather man i didn't it, honestly it didn't occur to me that we might have weather issues until saturday night all of a sudden it hit me it might be cloudy it might you know it's, it was like the um <laughs> oh yeah jeremy says it's raining in minnesota cloudy in cali um it's like the intuition came in saying you better you better prepare to get flexible because all of these things <laughs> you made to like do this great broadcast it might just be cloudy so yeah it might be cloudy everybody um uh, yeah. but i'm gonna invite you guys to come on in and hang out anyway so come on in say hello we're still gonna be doing some meditation um Brittany's in the house she says hello mr brian yes pino isn't that crazy clouds whatever is what it is right the energy is still here it's gonna get clear we got time um Rhonda I seem to remember you being our weather girl right being able to move those weather patterns Rhonda is uh, also a member of the Akashic Academy a Reiki master she has moved through the learning to read the Akashic records course and she's earning her certification right now oh there's some sunshine come on in sunshine um, so let's all actually let's all take just a moment and just send that energy out of our hands, move in the clouds, part the skies. <laughs> Bex, Bex and you are working on it. Awesome. Thank you, Bexy girl and Rhonda. Our powerful weather girl, Susan's in the house too. Looking forward to this. Oh, it's bright in sunny Arizona. You lucky ducky. Nice. How are you guys feeling? How are you guys feeling this morning? I woke up feeling the um, alignment. It almost was like when I reminded myself, oh my gosh, we're on this galactic path to perfect alignment. I started to really tune into the energy. I started to feel the buzzing in my body. How about you, Brian? How'd you feel this morning? Uh, yeah, it, it was amazing this morning. Absolutely. Um, same, same thing, just when we got up this morning, um, just really felt the energy. My sister, um, she actually was sent me a text message earlier. She's actually back behind me here, but um, she said that she had a, had, a, had a lot of birds this morning while she was out meditating um, in her backyard and actually coming up close to her. It's just, the energy is just amazing, so. Nice, that's good. Yeah, as I was setting up here, I had a bee come in and circle around, gave me a little vortex in here. So I was hanging out with the bees this morning. Um, so what do you guys say? Let's pull a card to start our day. I've got I've got all of my decks of cards out here. Um, let's start with it, you guys. Well, we're gonna start with the goddess guidance cards. So I'm just gonna pull a card for us. Also, what I want to do, and if I get jibber jabbering, and um, you guys need to remind me, at 11 11, and I know we're in all different time zones across the planet here. 11 11 is a global unity meditation. So anytime we hit an 11 after the hour, which we'll have one coming up here in, oh gosh, now I'm on the spot to do my math. Um, seven, seven minutes. minutes. <laughs> we will, Rhonda says her crystals are outside. Brittany says, yes, put a card. Um, so at 11, at the 11s, we're going to all pause and just really hold that space for the unity meditation. Rhonda, I'm glad that you mentioned your crystals. Brian and I were talking about the crystals right before we got on. I've got a couple of mine outside here. Um, wasn't sure if it was going to start raining in Southern Cali, but we're actually, skies are parting pretty seriously right now. As you can see, I'm squinting a bit. The sun's beaming me in the eyes. Um, well, it looks like you might have a little bit of blue sky back there behind you. Yeah, check that out. <clears throat> I was tuning into the Galactic Federation asking them to part some clouds for us. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Part them in Missouri, too. That's right. Brittany said she had a nice moment at 11.11. She's, so, Brittany, you must be, are you in Eastern time? Good. Nestor has got the Oregon. Awesome. Okay. Pulling a goddess. Oh, yeah, the sun. There we go. I'm going to have to get a baseball hat so I can see without, without sweating. All right. So just asking spirit to bring forward a card for each and every one of us as we prepare for this transitional change. Ushering in this change. As soon as I say transitional change, it's like the, the energy all goes through my body. 
Oh, nice. Okay. Rhiannon, the sorceress card. You guys see that? That is a good one to get today. I actually have my, I have some oil in my pocket that I'm going to put on here in just a second, my high priestess oil. Um, you are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. Thank you, spirit. Yes, we can, especially with this energy that's coming. It's really shifting our timelines, moving us into the highest possible timelines for ourselves, the highest vibrations that we've got going on here. Um, of course, now I'm like my oil. Oh, there's my oil. I've got my high priestess oil here that I got from Miss Teresa Warren. Sent me a little present. I'm going to put my high priestess oil on. Want a little high priestess oil, B? Sure. Since, since I have magical powers, like my card said, I'm just going to send it right through the computer to you. How many of you guys out there want a little want a little high priestess oil? Thank you. <laughs> awesome. And in the house, too. All right. If you'd like me to anoint you with the high priestess oil, give me a yes, and I will send it out to each one of you guys on the third eye. Put on Brian's third eye. Painting him here. Sharon says, right. yes. You got it, Sharon. This is high priestess oil coming. Courtney, good morning. How are the skies in, uh, up there where you are, Courtney? Rhonda says, yes, yeah, she'll have some high priestess oil. I realize that I can really start using this crystal here with all of these ends to send this energy, to shoot energy. So sending it out. Mm, that smells awesome. Teresa, yes. Susan says yes. Sonia says yes. Cloudy word. Courtney is yes. Sending out the high priestess energy to all of you guys. How many of you guys have gotten really nice and clear about what it is that you want to manifest during this time? What timeline you want to move to? Denise says yes. I know I have. I've spent, um, I've really been feeling the energy, like a lot of things coming up to move and release things that we, yes, like Elma says, yes. Releasing those patterns that no longer serve us. I was really emotional yesterday. How about you guys? How are you feeling? How, how about you, Brian? Um, emotions were okay yesterday for me. So. Okay for you? Oh, mine were like. Yeah, for me. <laughs> I just felt like but, but you know the, the emotions the emotions for the last couple of weeks have really been fluctuating yeah uh, I that too. You know, it's just that that whole energy so mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna pull a card for us too Archangel card cool so he says she's just letting things flow Amanda thank you for posting the live feed oh there's a hummingbird joining us hello Hummer oh my gosh he's beautiful he's red and green so, so I just pulled us an Archangel card, Emily. Oh, nice. Who, who do we get for you? Raphael. So we got, uh, we got Raphael is who we got. And it says, there's something better waiting for you. Do what you know is right for you, a spiritual quest. Yeah. So I'm going to take that as a confirmation today with all the new energies that we're going to be getting this yeah. afternoon. So. Yep. Awesome. Me too. I've been doing, I'm really excited for shifting into this higher timeline. I feel really clear on the things that I want to create in my life, the things that I want to share, that share out with everybody else out there. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to release those things that no longer serve me. I mean, even though I work in this field, right? Um, oh, the binaural beats have helped Kim. That's great. I still experience a lot of times where, you know, my frustration with life will come up or I'll get... I'll, I'll, my presence will be pulled out of the ex uh, the moment and I'll be either too far in the future or too far in the past. And I'm looking forward to letting that go. And I can feel it like releasing from my body. I feel myself moving so much more into a space of presence in every moment. Um, that's yeah, I, I, was actually, I was actually thinking this week, actually Saturday, it's like, okay, what timeline, what timeline <laughs> am I going to be moving into this time, you know, with this energy? Um, and where are we going to wind up at? You know, what's what? What are the changes we're going to see this time around? Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited for it. I think there's a lot of good things that are going to come from this whole energy shift this time around. Um, I think people just really need to be open to it, though. Be willing yeah. to accept it. Yeah, I was reading an article that somebody sent me this morning, um, a transmission from Kuan Yin, who, of course, is the Ascended Master of Compassion. And Kuan Yin was talking about through this person who was channeling that we can expect changes in the financial structure. Mama Bear is in the house. Hi, Kim. 
shifts in the financial structure so that there's not as much struggle for light workers, which bring that on, baby, right? Um, also shifts in the political system, shifts that will help more of our light workers really want to come forward and participate in the government. Right now, like I don't even like watching the news, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's it eh, gets me in that space of just feeling like the fear and the frustration. Oh, it's on the 11s. We're going to pause and just do this, the unity peace meditation. So I'm looking forward to any shifts that are coming in finances, in politics, in our family zones. Let's let's bring it on and really be in a place where we can all step into our power. All right. So since we've got an 11 right now, it's 9-11 where I am, but I know it's 11-11. Is it 11-11 where you are, Brian, right? It is. Everybody, take a moment. Get really grounded. Feel your feet on the ground. Open up that heart space. Just really drop your consciousness into your heart space, creating p space for peace and love and unity here on the planet. And unity doesn't necessarily mean that we all have to think the exact same way. It means that we're aligning. And today is really all about alignment, right? About aligning in oneness and aligning in what is the highest good, which, is, which expresses itself through each one of us a little bit differently. Everybody's just taking that moment, holding the space. I want you to imagine everybody just like connecting, holding hands all around the planet. Being very present in this moment of peace and unity, global unity, global peace, global oneness. Not only our oneness with each other, but our planet in oneness with the rest of the cosmos. Anchoring in. Imagine anchoring in that energy, too. Imagine just really opening and bringing all of that peace energy into your heart. Expanding it through the heart space, pushing it out through your heart, filling your entire body, pushing it out to fill the room that you're in, to fill your house, pushing it out more to fill the entire neighborhood that you're in, pushing it out some more, cover the state cover the country that you're in, pushing it out even more, covering the entire world, and then really just anchoring that energy deep into Mother Earth, sending it into that crystalline grid. Awesome. Brittany said, are we doing a guided meditation later? Yep. We are going to be doing a guided meditation. Amanda says, beautiful. Yep, 11-11. So it's 11-11 somewhere in the U.S., right? <laughs> actually, right across Missouri there in the central time zone. It's actually 11-13 now. They're 9-13. Yeah, exactly. um, so the eclipse actually starts here at 9. Is it 941 or 942? 11-41. Uh, 9 should be is when the partial should, should start for you. Starts. I'm just kind of like scanning the skies right now, I'm trying to figure out where the moon even is. It must be getting close up there. No, I'm not actually supposed to look at it. Don't want to look at the sun. Did, did you get your Did you get your eclipse glasses, Emily? You know what? I didn't. I couldn't find them anywhere. They were sold out everywhere. But my neighbor next door, he's uh, he's a great tool man. He's a fireman. He's got all kinds of great tools, and he has um, welding glasses, right? The big welder's mask. And uh -huh. I remember the solar eclipse, we were able to check it out through the welder's mask. So I'm not, I'm not going to look up because my mom's on right now. She'll be, she'll be mad at me. She'll be like, I told you not to look at the eclipse, Emily. All right. So let's go ahead and do a little guided meditation. We'll prepare for, um, get our bodies prepared for the eclipse happening today. I'm just going to share this out quickly with a couple of groups. Anybody who wants to join the live meditation, be welcome to join us. Feel free to share this out too, guys. We're getting ready to start the eclipse. Um, Nestor said he's going to walk out in a space suit and a welding helmet. Sweet, Nestor. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to go get I'm, uh, it, I might go off camera for a bit and come back with a big welding helmet on. You guys can get a good giggle at me. Okay, I'm going to share this out a couple spots. I just checked on my phone. I've got a lot of um, my friends texting me like, how's the energy today? I have to text them back. Well, I'm live. 
if you want to come hang out. Awesome. So I, I just got notification that uh, downtown Kansas City is starting to clear out for us. So keep the energy yeah, flowing, people. Yeah. <laughs> and in that energy, I've got, I've got it. It's clear up there, too. Right, right, right. Okay. So for our guided meditation, really preparing to bring in these energies, um, there are going to be amazing light codes coming in the planet. Now, as the moon moves over the sun and we experience that um, shift in the electromagnetic energy here on the planet, our bodies also have a very strong shift in the electromagnetic energy. Um, and I just want to share with you guys, since the, the sun is so bright on my face right now, it's, it's hard for me to even see my screen. So I probably won't be putting up a lot of comments. Um, well, one, because I'm going to be leading a meditation here with us and it's I can't yeah. meditate and post comments, but just because the the sun is so bright, like I literally, my screen is washed out. So forgive me for not acknowledging the things that you guys say. I will check back in and see who's out there talking to us and and um, try to keep you guys as in, as included in the process as possible. But it is it is really tough to see. So that would be why I would be ignoring you, not not for any other reason than than that. So. While we experience <clears throat> this strong shift in our electromagnetic field, there's going to be light codes coming in. All right, light codes, and you guys have probably heard me talk about information before. Everything is energy, right? Sound is a particular frequency of energy that stores and transfers knowledge. When we think about when our, the way we communicate back and forth with each other, the language that we use, you're like, oh, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I get how you know, that, that sound frequency stores and transfers information. Light particles do the same thing. And as we are experiencing this shift in electromagnetic energy, there are gonna be massive light codes. So that information coming into our bodies. And what happens when we open up our, our cells to receive this information, specifically the telomere on our cells, we can then activate and wake up all of this ancient knowing inside of our body. So it's like the information all of this, this, this connection to our higher self, understanding how we can shift timelines, all this innate knowledge that's programmed inside of our cells, but it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like locked up, right? So the light codes that are coming in, you can think of those as the keys. These are the keys that are going to help unlock and wake up this energy inside of this ancient knowing inside of you, this higher level of consciousness inside of you. So that's what we really want to prepare ourselves to receive today. So. First and foremost, and always when you meditate with me, I'm going to invite you to get very, very grounded. Feel yourself connected to the Mother Earth. All right. I actually, I've got my shoes on in my garden. That never happens. Hang on. Let me just take my shoes and socks off here. I ran out to the grocery store earlier today, which is why I have my shoes and socks on to begin with. Otherwise, I generally don't have them on. I like to stay very, as much connected to the planet as possible. So, okay. Shoes and socks off. Got that problem fixed. Standing very planted here, very grounded in my own energy here inside of my garden space. All right. I want you to bring your awareness to that area where your feet are touching the ground, where you are actually planted, connected there on the planet. Okay. And really just allowing yourself to feel that connection. I want you to take your consciousness and send it down into that area. And I want you to start at the tip of your toes. And just feel that area where your toes are connected. And then moving down to the balls of your feet. And then feeling up to the arches of those feet. Very connected to the ground. And then moving into the heels. Where your heels are very connected to the ground. Good. And now we're going to go through a process of just really relaxing ourselves. Okay. So everybody, let's take some deep breaths together. Deep breath in. And exhaling. Nice and slow out your mouth. Okay, with this deep breath in, imagine breathing in the light. Bringing yourself to just a very strong state of presence and exhaling. 
Releasing anything else that you have to take care of today. Releasing any thoughts of the bills you have to pay. Releasing any expectations of, of the transitions that are coming. Just releasing. Allowing yourself to become very present in the energy. One more deep breath in. Exhaling. All right, good job. Now we're going to do some body relaxation, starting at the top of your head. And I want you guys to go ahead and touch the top of your head. Bring your awareness back up here to the top of your head. We had moved it down into our feet, so bringing it back up. And as you touch your head, just really allowing that to help you bring your awareness to that top of your head area there. And we just want to consciously relax just almost like melt, soften every area of our body. So there at the top of your head, just start softening, softening all of that energy around your brain. Allow that softening to come down, the softening to move across your forehead. So many of us hold that tension in our face and in our forehead, so just allowing the softening, moving down into your ears, allowing that softening Moving down the front of your face, that softening of every muscle in your face. Now focusing particularly on your neck, the back of your neck, allowing that softening to come. I hear the trash trucks coming, so I'm going to put my, my earbuds in here. Just staying with that softening as you're moving down your body. Now feel it moving in, that softening energy, moving into the top of your shoulders. There we go. Can you guys hear me? Check one, two, check one, two. Yep. We got Good. you. Thank you. All right, so feeling that softening, moving down the back of your shoulders. Now down the front of your shoulders, into the sternum area, softening, softening. Moving down the, your chest and your rib cage, just softening, relaxing, melting, softening. Good job. And now moving down your stomach area and the lower back and just allowing any tension that you're holding in that space just to soften and relax. Just melting all of that energy. Well, let's go back and focus on our arms, too. So let's move that energy, that softening energy, down the tops of your arms, down your biceps. Just really allowing that softening, that melting, moving down your forearms now. Feel it melting into your hands, moving down the palms of your hands, down your fingers, moving into your fingertips now. Just feel that, feeling that softening and melting, almost just like energy is now dripping off of your fingertips. Good, and let's move our awareness now back down to our hips, the hip area, just releasing any tension. Hips are another place where the energy can sometimes get stiff. Feel free to move your body a little bit too. I mean, I'm standing up, so it's easy for me to kind of sway back and forth here. Softening that area in your hips, and down the back of your legs, through the pelvis, the front of your legs, down your thighs, relaxing all of that space, softening all of those muscles, all of that mus muscular tissue, and moving down into your knees, feeling that softening, softening. Hi, guys. Dogs can't come outside, but you can. Moving down your, your calves. Letting that softening and melting move down, down, down into your ankles. And feeling that softening now moving into your heels, to the arches of your feet, up to the balls of your feet, the toes. 
And now just allowing the entire structure of your body, just that the boundaries of your body to just melt, allowing yourself to really become one with the energy, melting those boundaries between your physical being and the space, the ether, the energy around you. And allow yourself to tune into that frequency of really connecting to the energy, the space right around your body. And then we want to anchor ourselves. So we want to focus on that central column of light running up and down our spine. We want to sink that column of light like roots of a tree deep into the earth, so sending it down. Passing through the crust of Mother Earth. Moving down through the crystalline caves of Mother Earth. Sinking down into that liquid crystalline core center of Mother Earth. Allowing ourselves to be deeply rooted into Gaia, into the planet here, this planet, this host of our existence here. Taking a moment to give love and gratitude to this planet for hosting this experience, this existence, this opportunity to have a life here on this planet, to learn about creating and manifesting what it is that we want to experience because we are we are ultimate creators. One of the main reasons that we incarnate here on this planet is to learn about manifesting, to understand the connection between our thoughts and our emotions and our vibrations. It's a process when we really learn about how manifesting works and we get good at it. It's a process of learning to stand in our power as the spiritual beings that we are as we learn to create an experience here of unity and oneness, we really come to understand how powerful we are as beings. And right now, everyone, I want you, if you have any fears of standing in your power, any hesitations, any old programs that still might cause you not to own every bit of the experience that you're creating, just releasing that, just allowing it to move down that column now. Just by giving it the directive, calling up any old programs that cause you not to fully stand in your power and just allowing those to effortless, effortlessly flow down this tube of light, giving those back to Mother Earth. Mother Earth knows how to transmute that back into love energy. Good, now let's focus again on that column of light and let's anchor it up into the space of ether. So moving that column of light out the top of your head, all the way up through the atmosphere, passing through the Earth's atmosphere, passing by the moon, passing the sun, passing our solar system and our galaxy. The other galaxies here in the universe and coming all the way up to that invisible force field there. And with one more breath, sending that column of light beyond that force field and anchoring it into the space of ether, the space of the Akasha, the space of primordial energy. That means energy before it has interacted with any other energies, just very pure energy. The other four elements, earth, wind, water, fire, they all stem from the space of ether or space or akasha. Anchoring into that dynamic matrix of energy. So we've got this nice open channel here. And now we're just going to circulate our breath all the way through this channel, okay? So everybody take a deep breath in. Bring that energy all the way up to the top of that column of light and exhaling, pulling it down, bringing it all the way down into Mother Earth. 
and then deep breath in. Bring it up, sending it all the way up. And exhaling. Sending it back down. This is a process I call running our energy, deep breath in. Sending it all the way up and exhaling. Bring it back down. A couple more deep breaths here, running the energy, deep breath in. Exhaling. Waking up every cell inside of your body while we run this energy. Preparing those cells to receive these light codes, deep breath in. All the way to the top of that column and exhaling. One more nice deep breath with the intention of waking up those cells. Deep breath in. All the way up. And exhaling. Good job. Now we're going to be using our intention to work with each cell in unison. But each individual cell, we're working with each individual cell, the billions of cells inside of our body in unison, okay? So as we talk to one cell, we're talking to every cell inside of our body. We recognize now in this moment that, that we are functioning as one, functioning in a space of unity. So I want you to imagine talking to these cells in your body and waking up, opening up these cells, expanding, creating more space inside of the cells opening up the mitochondria, opening up the telomeres. Telomere is like, a, is like an antenna. Imagine the cellular structure and then an antenna coming up off of that cell. Those are the antennas that receive the light codes, okay? So imagine that antenna going up on each telomere in every cell. So now you have billions of antenna coming up inside of your body ready to receive these light codes that are coming in our planet. They're telling me right now to connect those telomere into the Christ consciousness grid. Okay, so the crystalline grid of the planet is the plant is the grid that runs through the actual ground, through the planet of Mother Earth, all across like a big blanket of energy, of grid work energy that runs, encompasses the entire planet. It's a communication structure allows us to send and receive information through the crystalline grid. There's also a higher grid on the planet. This is the Christ consciousness grid. This is what is going to become fully activated through this transitional time when the electromagnetic energy shifts. It's going to allow a full activation of the Christ consciousness grid. And for those of you who would like a little more explanation on Christ consciousness, Christ consciousness, and, and that is referring directly to Christ, referring directly to Jesus, um, although Jesus is not the only individual to achieve Christ consciousness, um, but that's where the Christ, that connection into the name Jesus came. And it is a, it is a scientific application of all 12 strands of DNA being activated inside of our body. And of course, when all of these strands of DNA are active and functioning, we then, we have the ability to heal instantly. We have the ability to stay in that um, that mindset of oneness, that unity consciousness. We have all of our intuitive gifts and our psychic gifts are fully activated. And we maintain that energy of the highest good. We maintain that heart of service for the planet. We maintain levels of peace, love, and joy in our life in all moments, regardless of the circumstances in our life. So as we have all of these telomeres, all of these billions of antenna coming off of our cells right now, we want to imagine those. We've got one final release of all the patterns that no longer serve us. Our trash trucks are coming by right now, taking those out for us. I don't know if you guys can hear that through my through my earbuds, but it's pretty loud. They just drove by my house. Thank you for taking out all of what no longer serves us. Symbolism, really, guys, the universe speaks to us in symbolism. Nothing is, nothing is, is, um, is a wasted experience. Nothing in your life is um, just a coincidence, okay? 
the fact that the trash trucks are coming by right now and helping us to release this, it's a way to symbolically remind us, it speaks to our, you know, our subconscious mind. That's, that's the language the subconscious mind speaks in is in symbols. Okay, that's why sacred geometry is so powerful because it works on an even deeper level than our ability to have actual language because in language, there's, there's interpretation. It's, it's different for each individual. When, our, when we speak in symbols, what happens is the ancient knowing inside of our body is receiving, um, is receiving a talk into, right? All right, so sending up all of those antenna from the telomere now and connecting them into the Christ consciousness grid allowing ourselves to become fully activated in all 12 strands of our DNA and allowing you to bring in that energy from the Christ consciousness grid through the telomere, bringing it into every cell inside of your body. Just being in a space of opening, creating space for these light codes to come in, releasing any subconscious programming that prevents us from running these new, and I, and I like to use like computer terms because so many of us are familiar with the technology ideas of our phone and the apps that we run on our phone. So if you have an app on your phone that's preventing you from fully activating either fear or uh, maybe doubt, whatever your vibrational frequencies are that cause you, that might cause you to not fully run these new light codes, we're just gonna delete those right now Again, allowing those antenna from the telomere to be fully connected and engaged in with the Christ consciousness grid. Just allowing yourself to be present in the energy, allowing the shifts and the opening and the expansion to take place. Right now bringing your awareness to that heart energy centering your consciousness in that space of your heart. Setting the intention that we're gonna anchor our consciousness into our heart space. Allowing it to stay fully intact there in the heart space. Our consciousness tends to move back up into the brain area. We're gonna set the intention now that as we move through this electromagnetic shifting, that new programs are installed into our being, which will allow that consciousness to stay in that space of our heart. Melting all heart walls, all past hurts, any frustrations, any grievances that we're hanging on to, any grudges that we're hanging on to, not just allowing those to melt away as our consciousness fully returns to our heart space. And now we want to create and expand that toroid field of energy moving through our heart. Okay, and what that is is the heart. We want to expand and push that, push our energy, the energy of our consciousness out through your heart space, sending it out to the front of your body. And then it's going to move, sending it out about six feet in front of you, and then it's going to move to the sides, moving around the top, around the bottom of your body, moving all around. And then it's going to come back in the back of your heart space. And as you breathe in, it's like you're pulling it back in and then exhaling, sending it out. Inhaling, bringing it in. Exhaling, sending it out. Inhaling. Exhaling. Increasing the electromagnetic frequency of your heart space, inhale. Exhaling. Pushing that energy out through the heart as you exhale, inhale. Sucking it back in, exhaling. Sending it out, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. Good job. Now that we've got a very strong, we've increased that electromagnetic frequency that's moving around the heart space. 
Let's imagine creating a grid from each one of our heart spaces, connecting to each other all over the planet, sharing this electromagnetic energy, amplifying it, and setting an intention that as we open to receive this transitional energy, these light codes that are coming in the planet, that we hold space for every other person in the planet to also receive these light codes. I want you to imagine yourself as a beacon of light coming up from Mother Earth wherever you are on the planet. I'm feeling this energy circulating between each one of us, all of the beacons of light as we are spread all over the planet right now. Giving our intention to not only activate our bodies, but as we activate our bodies, we are activating the grid system. We're activating the planet as a whole. We're activating human consciousness as a whole. Preparing to receive this massive upgrade in consciousness. Job. I'm just being in that energy for a moment and then we'll come back to the here and now together. Just taking a moment just to be in that space, just to be present. Okay, good. And now as we start to come back to the space of the here and now, wiggling your fingers and toes, moving your body. Opening your eyes whenever you're ready, just slowly moving back in. One reason why dancing is so good for us and it's so good for, and actually the eclipse has started. And, and Emily, the sun is starting to poke through the clouds, so I'm gonna shut my camera off. Okay. Cool. And um, go outside and try and get stuff set up. Set up. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. We've got Brian going out to set up now. Got some sun shining in. All right. So I invite you guys to move around a little bit. I would totally play us some music here. Actually, I'm going to take my buds out because the trash trucks are coming. Do you guys like that? Good. Brittany says, Brittany liked it. Yvette says, thank you. Jeremy says, yes, new downloads are coming in. Oh, Annie is outside with her crystals. Yep, we got to be careful out there in that energy. Eleanor says, thank you. You guys are so welcome. Thanks for doing this with us. Thank you. The planet says thank you as well. Um, I'm going to play a little music here. Play a little music. Let's see. I'm going to play. I'm going to play one of my favorites on Pandora. Cassie's in the house. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys too. We got the Native American flute music. One reason why dancing, Bobby Joe's here. Sherry, you guys are so welcome. You guys are welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, one reason why dancing is really so good for us, you guys, is because it helps to move energy in the body. Sometimes our energy gets stagnant inside of our body, so moving it around a little bit. Erin, you're so welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. I invite you just to move it around. Get your dancing on. I won't be break dancing to the flute music for you, but I'll move around. I'm a, I'm a dancer. I like to dance. Stretching up, opening up your heart space, stretching up to the sky. Feels good. Awesome, the love is flowing. I know I feel like Catherine's in the house. Catherine, you are so welcome. Yes, the music, move into the music. It's good. Um, one reason that yoga, a break dance, come on. I'll break dance, get it, 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 get it. Um, I, dancing has been a huge part of my past. I actually danced all through high school, danced on my, on my drill team, we choreographed, we'd work together. When I was, when my friend Christina and I were the captains of the dance team, like we were, uh, when we were seniors in high school, we took it so seriously. Like we would have everybody line up like in a, in a straight line like this. Like, you know, like I'd be in the front and then she'd be in the back and all the rest of our dancers would be in between us and we would do the moves all together and we would like make sure that we were all hitting the exact same spot so that we were all in unison, all in synchronicity, right? Um, which is really, guys, that's what today is all about, is about this alignment, about the synchronicity, 
about the perfect alignment of the cosmos um, to really help us step into our full power, shifting into these higher timelines. Um, laughter is good too. Feel free to laugh, let it rip. You're welcome to laugh at me, laugh with me, laugh at me. I don't, I'm all good with that. I got so many cards, all my cards out here today. I wasn't peeking at the sun. That's not what I was doing. So my mama was on here earlier. She'd be mad at me. She told me, do not look at directly at the sun. I'm like, I'm not going to. I'm going to follow the rules on this one. I teach you guys about sun gazing. Not safe to sun gaze in the middle of the day, so I'm not going to do it on eclipse day either. Okay, so we pulled a card earlier from the goddess cards. I am going to pull, this time, a happiness card for us. Okay. So oracles of happiness here. So any, we'll do a little card tutorial. Any of you guys out there who have cards or use cards or like cards, I'm a big card liker. Um, we are funny to dance, yes. I love dancing and I love being funny and I love laughing. A lightness of being. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, that's um, something that's really important to me is having that lightness of being in your life, being willing to just roll with the punches, being flexible, having a lot of laughter in your life, not holding anything too um, seriously in your own mind and heart, definitely not judging ourselves too seriously or harshly. Um, let me teach you about how I use my cards. And many of you guys out there have cards, probably have your own ways of using them. This is what I do. I always want to clear the energy from my cards. Um, oh, yeah, Susan says that the birds are surrounding her space. The eclipse is happening, and it's an incredible feeling of relief right now. Birds flying in circles. Yeah, you guys are all seeing the birds, right? Brian's sister, Brian shared that his sister saw the birds, too. My birds are singing. I'm just going to look around and see if I can see. Oh, my gosh, the skies are, like, clear here. The skies are totally clear. I want to see if um, my, a couple of, my boy Jack is inside today. He's staying home to view the eclipse with me and our neighbor. I'm gonna see if we can get some eclipse glasses going so we can see this, see the welding equipment. Okay, so I take my cards, cards hold energy, and cards will hold the energy of the last drawing that you did or the last space that you were in or the last person that you used them for. So clearing them to get a good, clean read is always important. So I hold my cards, sending the intention to clear out any old stagnant energy, just like our bodies get stagnant energy and we gotta move around, our cards can get stagnant energy too. So I knock on my cards with the intention to clear them. Then I infuse them with my with the heart energy, asking spirit just to bring forward the perfect card, showing us where we can go on this day to really tune in to finding our happiness. These are again, these are happiness. This is the happiness oracle cards, and lightness of being really stems from happiness, right? Happiness can, can elude us many times, but the truth is, is it's simple. It's a choice. And once we get our vibrational frequencies in alignment, again, today all about alignment, um, the choice becomes so much easier. There's our card. Oh, we got two. Ha! Okay, this is very interesting. The circle of clouds card that we got. And again, I'm really happy that the clouds are parting here today. All right, this comes from the air family. And these cards, each one of them have messages that go along with them. So I'm going to read. Susan says, huge butterflies just showed up. That's awesome. So many flying creatures around, right? I had a bee and a hummingbird come hang out with me. Very, very close up, like startling close up. I always love that. Okay, so the air family card that we got here, the circle of clouds. Woo! This is awesome. And I love that the clouds are parting right now. A bunch of dragonflies, Bobby Joe said. Nice. I love the dragonflies too. Okay. I must read the wrong card. Okay. The clouds of Dharma are protecting the truth. Okay, so here are this this card that it gives us positive and negative attributes of this card. So we're gonna read the positive ones first, all right? The positive, you're guarding your five senses from inappropriate actions. Okay, that's good. Our five senses are very susceptible to bringing in 
frequencies, energies, um, programs, obviously. I don't know if you guys saw the last. Oh, actually, we haven't released that yet. So I don't know if you heard the last podcast that, that Coach Nick and I recorded, but actually it hasn't been released yet. But if you saw the behind the scenes footage of us um, recording that, we talked all about the information that we're taking in through our senses, through our taste, through our touch, through our sight, just the information that we're consuming, right? This is a good one that says that we're guarding our five senses from inappropriate actions. We have the power to overcome all obstacles in our life with the five sensory perceptions, even the fears that we thought were once surmountable. Nice. Okay, so the, the negative on this card, it's not really a negative, but it's more of a reminder. It says, do not allow yourself to be pulled away from your spiritual quest. All right. So the clouds are actually formed in a circle above you. Susan, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing so much. Yeah, we actually got circle of clouds. All right. I love it. All right. So again, the reminder on this card is don't allow yourself to be pulled away from your spiritual quest. Obviously, super important now as we're moving into this, you know, this big transition, which is all about us stepping into our power, especially as light workers and sharing our gifts with the planet and really holding that space for the it, this huge increase of consciousness that's coming in the planet right now. And we actually have moved into the official start time of the eclipse. So if you guys are beginning to feel the energy, I do. As soon as I um, even say the word or start putting my awareness to eclipse, eclipse, I, my body starts to tingle in places. Um, JT's got thunder rolling in where he is. Yep, some of us have some weather happening where we are. All right, and the other one we got is the space dragon. It's a good one. Normally, I'd only pull one card, but when two cards tend to jump out at you, like jumping cards or cards that like are just like, you know, as you shuffle and they begin to stick out of the deck like this, you're like, okay, those are my cards. That's how you know the cards that that have a have a big meaning for you. Sometimes, you know, if nothing jumps out, we use our intention to pull a card, and then sometimes there are jumping cards, what are known as jumping cards. They'll either fly out of the deck or they'll position themselves in some way where it's obvious that those are the cards for you, okay? So this is the space dragon from the space family. Whew. This is about bringing in the highest forms of wisdom. Woo, I love these cards. These are so synchronous. Aaron says the dragons are big for this morning. I know, right? Brittany, this is fun, right? Oh, Pino has full sun over there in Europe. Hold that space for us, Pino, over there. Okay, so this is about the highest forms of wisdom coming in. And it says specifically, the highest wisdom is often the simplest. And I totally agree with that. I feel like the most powerful wisdom is so simple and so profound that we often overlook it. And we often kind of are like, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's like loving yourself, right? How many times have we heard that, we, oh, you got to love yourself before you can love anybody else? And we're like, yeah, yeah, I've heard it a million times. There's a really deep power once we really sink into what it means to love ourselves. And, and um, one of the reasons that it becomes something that we miss is because we use the word love to like describe our coffee or Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones, right? Um, we, use, we use love very flippantly. So of course we brush off that idea of really loving ourselves so deeply because of what we're programmed to think about the word love in and of itself and how we're programmed to use it. So <clears throat> that's just one example of how the highest forms of wisdom and the most profound wisdom is often the most simple. And I share this with my students inside learning to read the Akashic Records that the gateway to these portals of knowledge, it does not have to do with Erica Stars in the house, hello, um, does not have to do with how much, how much, uh, see, I got, I got a clip's brain, how much intellectual knowledge we can process. It does not have to do with your IQ. It does not matter what your IQ says about you. It doesn't matter what you got on your SAT tests or your ACT tests, does not matter. The gateway through this expanding consciousness and the awakening of consciousness and plugging into the cosmos and, and receiving this cosmic wisdom has to do with how much you love yourself. The portal is through your heart space, right? It is actually 
through that heart chakra that we begin to connect and receive information. So it's really, really a profound thing to learn to love yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna read the positives of the Space Dragon card. We have the potential to develop pure consciousness here on this day where the electromagnetic shifts are happening so profoundly. I want you guys to recognize you have, we have, I have, we all have the power to develop pure consciousness. All right? Receiving and standing in that power today. That's what coming together here is all about. All right? The wisdom that we seek is transcendental. No matter how far we've come on this journey, we know that there's no rush and that patience now means everything. We help others to find their stillness. Okay. So let's just really take a moment and ground in again, ground in this stillness. And that's what the, the negative, which isn't really a negative, it's more of a reminder, something to bring our awareness to on this card, right? Oh, Brian's coming back. Um, it says, ground yourself in your human reality. <sighs> Reminding us to ground ourselves. Hi, B, you're back. I, I, I am. Awesome. Oh, I can... I'm going to switch the camera here real quick. Okay. Yes! Look at that. Okay, that is amazing. All right, I'm gonna shut. I'm gonna shut my side off here so we can have a full view of what you got going on there, my friend. I'm so excited. Look at that. Good grief. Ha! Ah! Okay, I gotta be quiet too. Well, come come <laughs> up on the screen. You can see it happening here on Brian's camera. And now you'll see a little bit of the clouds that are moving in front of it. I do. Yes. But. You know, as long as uh, it's the light clouds, we're okay. So, ah! and it looks like we're going to have some heavy clouds coming back through, but it looks like we've got some more blue sky behind it. So, we should be good to go. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Brian, for being the conduit of this energy for us. This is incredible. Don't look up at it. Don't look up at it, boys. Come look on my screen. Whoa, that, that's, where's that happening? So those are the voices of my boys here that you hear. Um, this is Brian, and he's in Missouri, and he's in the space of total of totality. So as the moon comes into alignment, you're going to see. How can he see it? Or how come it's dark there? He's got special equipment that he's broadcasting. Oh, well, we're not going to see it the this day. Is too bright. Uh, does your dad have the welding? My mom's going to go get it. Oh, awesome. Yes, guys, feel free to share this out. Share this out. This is incredible. I'm going to take a moment and share again, too. It's burning. So why don't you look in? Can you look into the sun? This is so incredible. Everyone, feel free to share this out with your friends. Share this out with people across the country who might not have this amazing technology like Brian has right now set up here for us. Just sharing, 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 sharing that's all over the place.
So many shares. Thank you guys for sharing out this information. Yes, yeah, Siraj says he really appreciates this. I do too. Thank you, Siraj. Yadira, thank you for being here with us. Okay, so we can okay, so get, get a little bit of cloud. 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 It will come back. It will come back. Okay, yep, there we go. Cloud, just clouds rolling through. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, hang on, but wait till Gina brings over the welding glasses. Oh, thank you, Brittany. We've got another 1111 coming up soon. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, when it, when it goes dark like that, everybody, it's just because there's a little cloud cover, but it's going to come right back. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have, we're gonna uh, have uh, a file. Are we going to have clouds now for a little bit? Yeah, for probably yeah, five. For probably five. Okay, then I'll come back on. I'll go back to a split screen here. Awesome. Oh, yes, Rhonda's going to hit one, 111 where she is. It is. It's really awesome. Okay, so we've just got a little bit of cloud cover coming in right now, but the clouds are going to roll out again soon. Um, I'm going to keep pulling cards. I'm going to go to... Go to a different deck of cards. Let's see which one I'm going to pull now. I think I'm going to pull the past life oracle cards. Past life oracle card. Yeah, welcome everybody who's coming in. If you're just joining us, because I just did a massive share out to everybody. We have incredible live feed footage here, um, except when the clouds roll in. And then... Try to get the dogs inside for me so they don't bark. Feel free to lure them in with a piece of cheese or a turkey or something. Make it worth their while to come running inside. Hey, Carolyn! All right, so I've got my past life deck here. And I'm pulling collective cards for everybody, not individual cards today. Just collectives for all of the group here. Um... So that's how we're going to be doing the card readings. Really help us to stay in that space of oneness, that space of unity. Really, oh, here it comes back again. Look, look, look. <laughs> oh, I saw it for a second. It's teasing me. <laughs> teasing me. Carolyn, hey, I'm glad you're here. Yes, for, this, for the sake of just really staying in that space and that frequency of oneness, I'm just going to be pulling collective cards for the entire group. So clearing the past life cards. Sending our energy into them. Um, hang on one second. My boys left the door open, and they're freaking me out because the cat's going to run out. Hey, guys, you got to close the door. Well, I think Apollo needs to be part of this. All right, I'm back. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think Apollo needs to be part of this. After all, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is true, huh? That kitty, he try, he loves to come outside and escape outside. But I'm just, and I know people have outside cats, but I'm, I'm scared to let my kitty outside. So I keep, I keep my kitty locked up. Um, but there, everything's under control. The zoo here at my house is totally under control. Okay, so we're going to be pulling a past life card here. Pino says, just from my understanding, what are you seeing? Um, in terms of the eclipse right now, Pino, is that what you're talking about? We're seeing the moon as it's moving over the uh, sun right now. And if you're wondering what I was running earlier for, <laughs> it was for the cat. I don't want the kitty to escape. Okay, pulling a past life card for us. Woo! Our Native American influence is coming in here. Incredible card. I love this. 
the Native Americans, of course, were um, very attuned to the skies, to the eclipses coming in, to the energy that came in and shifted humanity at that point in time. Very knowledgeable in terms of whew, getting the tingling chills there. Really incredible card again to pull on this day, our Native American heritage, allowing ourselves to tune in to that ancient wisdom and knowledge that is in each one of us that we bring from those past lifetimes of being Native Americans. Um, I feel very connected to a lot of different Native American tribes. Uh, one time in particular, I was hiking in Palm Springs up the tram. So in Palm Springs, California, there's the, the tram car that you can ride to the top of the mountains and um, various Indian tribes. I'm trying to remember the specific tribe. It was the, oh, the Coachella tribe because of the Coachella Valley, right? Um, and remember, I just remember having an experience of, I had my, my one, uh, London at that time was a little bitty boy and, and he wasn't really able to hike. So I had him on my back in the baby Bjorn and was going around hiking up there and just really this um, experience of feeling so connected to the tribe and the land washing over me at that point. And this was, goodness, London's 11 now, and he's an itty-bitty there, so that's probably 10 years ago. Um, and also, when we go to Sedona in the spring, we have a trip that we're planning, the first official retreat of the Akashic Academy being planned for this spring in Sedona. We're going to be doing um, some community service and some working with some of the Native American tribes there just to give back and, and be in that space of giving. Whew, look at that. That is amazing. All right. I'm going to, while we have a good view there, I'm going to go ahead and get myself off the screen. Keep getting myself off the screen. The energy here is just unreal right now, too. Yeah, you're feeling it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that your sister? Hi, sister. It is. That's Brenda. Hi, Hi Brenda. I know. Isn't that incredible? Hey, guys, why don't you open the side gate? Have her come in the side gate. Or that way. That's fine. Yeah, the Brenda, the, those, get the those, shout those, outs. Yep, Brenda. Sorry, B, go ahead. I, I, Brittany said the clouds moving in front of the, the moon was or the sun was pretty cool, and it really is. It really is. Oh, Susan, that's an awesome share. White Buffalo comes to me during my healings when you do the animal healings with people. It's awesome. Can't stop swaying. It's starting to feel colder. Yeah, you're feeling the, the, the shift in the electromagnetic energy. They said we could actually see a anywhere from five to 15 degree temperature shift when we get oh, totality that's exciting Put some sunglasses on. I would have it. Okay, I'm going in. You guys see me? Like <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah, it's it's really tough to see. I can I can see it though. You got to look at it for a second and kind of keep your eyes focused in on it. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> it's really cool. Cool. Yeah, we're we're sharing the welder's the welder the welder helmet here. So thank you, you to Bex 
and to Rhonda because the blue skies are just opening up. Amazing. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Bex and Rhonda. My girls, my Kashuk Academy girls in there. Let's see. Jerry's in the house. Jerry. Jerry is Brian's lovely wife. She is also learning to read the Akashic Records right now, now we're the Akashic Academy. Yes. Yes, another Jerry in the house with us here. This is amazing. Linda says she's gonna go do a little meditation time. Great idea, Linda. We're going to meditate again here, too. Our AA team, that's right. The AA team at the Akashic Academy. All right. I'm going to, once again, kick myself off screen. Difficult for the actors to do, but I'm going to do it. Boom. Oh, yes, 11-11. Christy, thank you. Awesome. All right, so we've got another 11-11 around the planet. Um, so let's just all just move into that space of really just connecting in unity and that moment can, of peace. Yeah. Can, can we do a reset on this one too? Can we do a reset? Can we do a reset? What do you mean? At the top where we hold the breath. Oh, yeah. Do we need a reset breath? Sure. Yeah. What do you – so reset breath is something really powerful that um, I teach inside the academy. Brian, what should we reset? Give us the uh, directive just, of what we're going to reset today. I, I think we just need to reset all of our energies to, to be able to take in this new energy that's coming with this eclipse right good, now at this time. Good call. I love it. All right. So the reset breath has to do with really holding in that top space at the top of your breath. That's the space of zero resistance. Okay. And at that space of zero resistance, we really have the ability to completely bring in any kind of programming that we want. So let's all set the intention right now that at the top of our breath there, at that reset breath, we're going to be releasing any old energies and just coming to a place of complete neutrality and openness to receive this energy. So everybody deep breath in. Holding at the top, that point of zero resistance holding into it, and then exhaling. Let's also set the intention to reset the planet to a state of peace, okay? Deep breath in. Holding at the top. And exhaling. Once again, using the reset breath to help reset our energy grids, to reset the planet as well. Deep breath in. Resetting to a space of a state of unity, a state of oneness. Exhaling. Anchoring in a complete reset of the Earth's grids, of the energies so that we easily move into that state of peace and oneness. Deep breath in. <clears throat> Holding at the top. Good, and exhaling. Good, and just really being in a state of receiving this energy now. Deep breath in. Holding there at the top, exhaling, taking just a moment to bring your awareness to the fact that as we do this, we are, we are resetting the energy for not only ourselves, but the entire planet. Acknowledging that we have the power to do this, deep breath in. Holding. And exhaling. Yeah, Danielle's joining us. It is so cool. I agree. One more deep breath in. Holding at the top of that breath. Really anchoring in the intention to reset to a vibration of peace, oneness, and unity. Exhaling. 
your chest. And just allowing yourself to feel the energies, just to be in this state here, present with the shifts that are coming on the planet. So amazing. Amanda says her head and tingles are going. Christy's feeling a little out of her body. Yes, totally agree, Christy. JT can feel the higher vibes. JT is a member of the Akashic Academy as well. Went through studying the Akashic records. And yeah. Yes, Susan agrees to the reset. Yes. Reset bankers, Illuminati, politicians. Yes, all of those negative lower vibrating energies. Yes, resetting to peace. Yes, Siraj, the um, article that I read this morning had a lot to do with exactly what you're talking about. The political structure, the financial structure resetting all of these ways that we have been um, held down, we've been suppressed through the chemtrails, through the vaccinations, through all of the programming that we've come under, allowing ourselves to be free sovereign beings, resetting those old structures. <laughs> Nancy's lawn crew is here. Nancy, my, my gardener showed up in the middle of my live video the other day. Oh, so amazing. Jeremy talking a little bit about the society of lack. Yes. Nancy's laughing. Monica feeling a little dizzy. They're ringing in your ears. Feeling thirsty. Oh, I'm glad that you said that. Yes, everybody... Drink plenty of water. Remember that water conducts electricity. All right. And, and you might feel thirstier than normal right now. Um, regardless of if you feel thirstier or not, you definitely need to be drinking a lot, a lot of water. Really conducting this energy. I'm going to burn some Palo Santo here where I am. Palo Santo is holy wood, and Palo Santo is um, an energy clearing tool. More specifically, it's an energy reset, like, like we were just talking about using the reset breath. This uses, yeah, oh, bless the water too. Great call, Amanda. Thank you for reminding us all of that. We can bless our water with intention, so... Um, I'm going to bless this big goblet of water that I have here with the intention of really activating the highest levels of consciousness. Our bodies are made up mostly of water. Our planet is made up mostly of water. Again, just another example of how the microcosm and the macrocosm are so connected, how they reflect one another. We are the microcosm. Mother Earth being our macrocosm here. Is the sound gone, Sharon says. Um, I don't know. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you fine, I Emily. I can hear you fine, Emily. Okay, good. I don't think the sound is gone, Sharon. Hopefully the sound comes back for you. Jerry just got a big download. She's got lightheaded and buzzing in her head.
You guys can hear fine. A little lightheaded, Jerry says. Jerry Boyle, that's Jerry Boyle. Got Jerry's in the house. Okay, good. You guys can hear me. Thank you. Um, I invite you guys, if you're in a space where you can, um, Jerry's, hi, snap. Jerry, snap. I love it. Trish, thank you for sharing. She's really feeling her own vibration right now. I invite you guys to, um, if you have uh, crystals that you want to charge in this energy. Now, of course, amethyst doesn't like the sunshine. So you don't want to put your amethyst in the direct sun. But if you have other crystals that you want to charge, if you have sages that you want to burn, Aaron's feeling the fun energy. If you have Palo Santo, if you have oils that you like to use, um, when we bring our, our products, our elixirs, our special tools, here come the birds for me coming in. Um, you guys have seen me use my tuning fork. I've got chimes. I've got all kinds of fun equipment that I like to use. When we bring our sacred items to ceremonies like this, we really do. We create sacred ceremony. Um, so I invite you guys to... Pull some cards for yourself if you have cards. Sound your chimes. Burn your, your Palo Santo. Burn your sages. Create a ceremony for yourself. Amanda's got her amethyst with it. I got my amethyst too. Put it in the shade. Now I gotta take my own advice. My amethyst was sitting right in the sun. So was mine. So was mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's making some holy basil and lavender tea. Go, Aaron. It's your birthday. Gonna drink holy basil like it's your birthday. I'm just doing a little new age wrap there for you guys. You have your fiddle outside. Your grandma and your dog's ashes, books, jewelry. Awesome, Aaron. Thank you for sharing. You just felt guided to pull your stuff out. That's amazing. Following that intuition. I love it. Jerry pulled a few cards for herself. Good. Hey, B, what's that big orb shining up there in the corner? Brian might have gone inside or shut his sound off for a second. Ah, amazing. Trish has her rose in her clear quartz. Yes, Neelam, thank you so much. Let's, yeah, that's that's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a his thumb. <laughs> Jerry, busting your husband like that on national TV, Jerry. Um, back to what Neelam was saying. Sending love and light to everyone. I'm gonna take a cue from Neelam right here. I think it's the orb lens, Julia says. I'm going to send everybody some love and light, too. Amazing. So we've got a little cloud cover coming in. It'll move out. Don't worry. Yeah, it'll move out. Yeah, it'll move out. Don't worry. Be happy. Go ahead and bring it back. See, i got my Palo Santo here burning. Yes, love and light to everyone, Jerry says. Sending love and light to everyone on the planet. All of you guys here holding this space, really bringing in this energy. <clears throat> Thank you, Nilam. Divine love and blessings to you as well. Sending that out from my heart too. Sending it out everywhere. Love, light, and healing for everyone. Yes. Holding space for any healing. Yes, we... I, I wish you could. I, really I wish you could really see what looks like. What out looks like out here because hell, hell, the second, the sec the the, 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 the how intent around us is just it's, it's just it's deep. You lucky duck. I think the energy's so intense. It's uh, your sounds cutting a little bit. I wish I could be there in the middle of it too. I'm happy. I'm happy to be anchoring in in Southern California, though. Mm. 
Twin heart meditation done, sharing blessings to everyone. Thank you so much. Pouring love to everyone. Thank you, everybody. Julia sending unconditional love, unity, and joy. Everyone, let's focus on the feeling of expansion. Just feeling that expansive energy through your heart, through your whole being. <clears throat> Anytime that we're bringing in new things into our life, we have to create room and create space for that. So really just expanding right now, expanding in this energy. So much expansion, so much light, receiving the light codes now. Lots of nature sounds around me. <clears throat> Got a squirrel chirping somewhere and the birds. Go back to a full screen there so we can and just really take in that amazing view that Brian has for us. Lams Namaste. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Just what I was thinking too, Rhonda, just wow. Yeah, more than anything, guys, today is just really a day to be very present, being very mindful, being in deep meditation, positively visualizing the shifts here on planet Earth, being in that space of love. So let's just all, let's take a moment now to just imagine and visualizing the highest timelines the highest possible timelines, the highest good for planet Earth, for ourselves. So let's just go back into our meditative state here. You don't have to close your eyes if you'd like to keep your eyes on the eclipse. You can just actually, very similar to how we gaze into a flame for a flame meditation, gaze right into the images here on, on your screen. <clears throat> it's getting quiet except for the humans, Monica says, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty quiet and still here as well, with the exception of the lawnmower down the street, which is, that's fine. So let's move back into our, into our state of meditation. Everybody's taking a nice deep breath in. And again, I'm not going to close my eyes. I'm just going to gaze right into the image that Brian has here for us. Amy's feeling a lot of energy in her heart, in her third eye, in the crown, yes. Oh, Amanda, thank you for sharing. Starting to see it happening there on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. Sending our love to that side of the country. All right, so let's just all, again, focusing on that column of light that we established earlier. It hasn't gone away, but let's just bring our attention, our awareness back to that column of light. 
and closing our entire bodies and closing, following the line of our spine and nice straight spine. And then sending that column of light down into Mother Earth, anchoring deep into Mother Earth. And again, extending that column of light back up into the space of the ether. We haven't lost the connection, that a connection didn't go away. We're just bringing our awareness back to that big column of light that connects us, keeps us anchored in here, the planet. And then I want you to see energy radiating in 360 degrees out of your heart space, connecting with everyone else's heart energy, connecting into the heart chakras of everyone here on the planet. I can connect in with the third eye as well. So we have a grid connecting every single one of us from our heart space and a grid connecting our third eyes. Trish has a patchy tear, the beautiful stone. Let's just take some breaths to really get the energy moving through this grid of connection that we have going. Deep breath in. Exhaling. Synchronizing our breath, synchronizing our energy here together. Deep breath in. Exhaling. Deep breath in. Exhaling. Again, deep breath in. Exhaling. And now everybody really focusing on that third eye chakra, that the seat of our intuition there. And through that third eye chakra, let's bring into our inner vision the highest timeline for humanity, the highest timeline for you, for me. Let's first of all, we'll imagine what our individual timelines look like. And I want you to just allow whatever's coming up in your imagination to come in right now for you. Seeing the highest good, the highest possible timeline, the highest possible reality for yourself and your family. Taking a moment to visualize what that looks like getting as specific as possible. And just giving yourself a few moments to, as you send that energy out through your third eye there, just allow it to become more and more clear. Gazing into that beautiful image of the sun, feeling that electromagnetic shift energy coming into the planet shifting and holding in that inner vision allowing it to come into clarity now the highest good for both you and your family seeing what that looks like to you as the clouds roll across the screen there, just al we'll allow those clouds to roll and part, giving us a symbolic moment to allow our highest good to come into clarity, to come into view. You can add energy to your visualizations by pulsating the energy from the third eye. All right, so we're using the center of our, our third eye right here to really visualize the highest good for ourselves and our family. And when you start to get that clear picture of what that looks like, you can pulsate it. So it's like shh, comes into view, kind of like what we see with the clouds now. And then it goes out and then it pulsates again, getting clear and then fades. And this pulsating effect, what it does is it begins to synchronize you with the heartbeat of the planet begins to synchronize your energy 
in a way that puts you in that vibrational frequency. It's almost like the, the rippling, that wave, cosmic waves of energy moving out that and back. Gwen says hello, she's watching from Canada. Hi Gwen. All right, I'm just gonna take a few minutes of silence for myself right now and really visualize what I'm creating for myself, my family, what my highest timeline looks like. Being in this space and state of sovereignty, freedom opening up the grid work for me to share this information and to share the idea of awakening, giving people support in the process of awakening their energy and just really opening the doors to share with as many people as I can. <clears throat> Traveling to sacred spaces, bringing in the energy and helping activate others who want to receive the energy, opening those paths for myself and my family. Being in the presence of peace and joy and love and unity. Being in a state of inspiration, being in a state of flow, the flow of the strength and the courage that it takes to put ourselves out there. Good, and now let's do a little shifting from our own individual ideas of our timeline, and let's imagine that the highest timeline for Mother Earth, for humanity, and whatever that looks like to you. And again, sending that energy out through your third eye with that pulsating effect. The pulsating effect is what allows us to really get in sync, in rhythm with the heartbeat of the cosmos, the heartbeat of the universe, the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Just seeing abundance circulated in a way that is more equitable, making life easier, making resources more available, seeing the entire Mother Earth tuning in to the frequency of abundance and prosperity, seeing peace and love and support and connection for every tribe across the planet. We see a melting of the dividing issues, creating space for the differences we have not to divide us, but to unite under those differences, respecting and having space for different traditions, recognizing that if we're all aligned in, in the true highest good, then we have tolerance for each other. We have tolerance for the differences. Seeing that unity, seeing the coming together, all the tribes across the planet in peace and harmony. Seeing a melting of the struggle, a melting of the injustice here on the planet. See a melting, a, a dispersion, 
meaning like breaking up that energy using the, the trident, the trident mudra, releasing all violent tendencies, releasing our anger and our frustration and our judgment, spiritually annihilating those energies across the entire planet. Seeing a harmony and a respect for Mother Nature, a love for Mother Nature. Seeing all humans taking care of our forests, our sacred forests and our oceans. Seeing all humans release the tendency for selfish gain. Moving into a state of love for themselves, for their neighbors. Good, and just keeping that energy pulsing, pulsing. Danielle, thank you. Danielle says, give us an amen up in here. Monica sending her love and light from, from Southern Australia. Thank you so much. Monica holding in and anchoring in this energy vibration on the other side of the planet. Thank you, Monica. Good job, everybody. Just really holding in your in your heart there. Sherry says it's peak time there in Colorado. All right, anchoring in through that place of the peak there in Colorado, anchoring that into the planet. Sherry, thank you for being there and being willing. Ooh, and as I say this and I talk this anchoring through, I just feel the energy flowing through my legs. Sherry, thank you for being a light worker volunteer to anchor in that energy in that space where you are in Colorado, such a sacred space. I love Colorado. I went for the first time when I was a kid. I was 14 years old. Brittany, thank you for being here with your energy and appreciating the space. First time when I went to Colorado, I just remember <clears throat> being so taken by that space, my soul felt more alive than I'd ever felt at any time in my life. It was at 14, just such a noticeable difference. I was just like, whoa. Amanda can feel it anchoring down through her lower back. Good. Holding space for all of those folks who are anchoring in that energy right now. That strength for each one, every one of you. Yeah, Tara Hot, Indiana, checking in. Thank you, Monica Freeman, for being here, anchoring in that Midwest energy. Ooh, incredible. Kristen sending in that love and light from Norway. Megan, yes, that relaxing, happy feeling, that's great. Just so perfect because that's really, that's what we want to anchor in, right? We want to always be in that state of relaxation and happiness. So thank you for bringing that awareness to this moment, Megan. Allowing ourselves to just be in a state of being and being happy. Yeah, my earbuds are back. That's right, Michael. Um, I don't know. I think Gina has it. Go grab you. Go grab the mask again from next door, baby. I think Gina took it back next door. One of the best ways to 
bring that happy, relaxing energy that Monica was talking about to the planet is to be in a state of that relaxation and happiness in the moment, being present. Jacob Parker says, love and light from Southern Utah. Nancy asked him if I have my sunscreen on. Thank you, Nancy, I do. Thank you for taking care of me, reminding me. I will take a hat though. Hey, Jackie, Jackie boy. Jack, would you mind bringing me a baseball cap? Would you go into my room and in, my, in the top of my closet, my blue one is in there? Nice. Jack made himself breakfast this morning. Three eggs and a bagel, he said. <laughs> he also said he's taking orders if y'all want anything to eat. Oh my God, thank you. Calm, peaceful love, yes. I love bringing our awareness and our attention to just the being, that presence of being and being in that state of calm, peaceful love. Because as light workers and, and these I, I fully 100% believe in these meditations that we're doing um, and activating this energy. But there's, <laughs> Jerry says, bless him. Yeah, right. I agree. Anytime the kids make their own food, I'm, I feel like I got the day off. Um, so what I was saying is that while I, I believe 100% in these meditations and sending in this energy and um, anchoring in these energies and putting intention out to what we're doing, we also need to pair that with just being in a state of presence, a state of being, um, not trying, not like being in that state of constantly, okay, what am I going to create next? All right, what energy do I have to send now? Just by being in that state of presence, that calm and that happiness, um, we are actually creating that. We're co-creating that for our future. Nicole loves us all. I love you too, Nicole Hart. Thank you. Michael, Michael's asking about some stones. Which stone? Labradorite? Labradorite. Brittany's friends are in the house. Nicole's in the house. Love that boy, Jack, right? Nancy, I love him too. He's bringing me a, he's bringing me a cap. Thank you, babe. Stone card. I think I need that. Hey, Mom, is it matter too much vanilla extract? Where'd you put vanilla extract in? I put, uh, uh, the cap, I pulled it up, kind of half of vanilla extract, and I put it in, well, it's just better than vanilla extract. I'm on recipe, I use vanilla extract and cinnamon. He, <laughs> he has his own recipe but for I the eggs. Because <laughs> I want my eggs a little sweet, so I put vanilla extract and cinnamon. He put vanilla extract and cinnamon in them. <laughs> it's like my belly hurts a little bit. <laughs> Okay, does anybody want to cancel their order? <laughs> oh, love those children. I love you, Jackie boy. Master chef, iron chef right there, Jack. Oh, which stone did I choose today? Oh, around my neck. Okay, I, I, was, I actually thought that that's what you, that's what you meant. Um, Carrie says, love and life from T Tasmania. That's cool. Today I have, I know, right, Jack, and making up the making up the things to eat. Today I have a Larimar. This is my Larimar on, um, this is the stone that I got in the Dominican Republic. And Larimar is an excellent stone to speak your truth. So my stones turn white in this time when I have them on. Hmm, oh, that's interesting. I've actually heard of that happening before a lot. Um, very interesting, very cool. So the stone that I have on today, as you guys can see there, it is um, a Larimar that I got in the Dominican Republic. And Larimar is an excellent stone for connecting. Is it akin to Labradorite? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I bet Google would know, though, Michael. Someone out here in our community might know as well. Um, so Larimar is strongly associated with the lost city of Atlantis. So Larimar is only located in the Dominican Republic. And it's a stone that Dan Ball is in the house. What's up, my friend, Dan Ball? Larimar is a stone that is only located in the, in the DR. And it hasn't always been a stone that has been on the planet. 
So here's, here's the story behind the Larimar. So Edgar Casey, who is known as the father to American psychics, um, he's the, my, my got a clip's brain, and my friend Dan jumped on, so. I'm not as, a, not, Brittany says it's not associated with Lab right. Um, and when I said hi, said hi, I lost my train of thought. Damn ball, he made me lose my train of thought, okay. So it's a stone that has not always been on the planet. And Edgar Casey, who uh, was the father of, he was, he's known as like the, the father of Amer the American psychic movement. And he channeled the Akashic Records. And he talked about how um, Atlantis had sunk off the coast of the Dominican Republic, somewhere there in that Bermuda Triangle area, and that it would return to the surface in 1977, that Atlantis would actually reemerge, reemerge on to the planet in 1977, which of course did not happen um, in the way that we necessarily think of those things happening. However, Larimar did come to the surface of the planet in the Dominican Republic in 1977, also the year I was born, too. If you want to do the math real fast, yes, that makes me 40 years old. And I turned 40 in the Dominican Republic this summer. My actual birthday was while we were there on our trip. And so this is a really special stone. I've always felt very connected to the stone Larimar. Um, but again, associated with the, the ancient cities of Atlantis and Lemuria and the ancient wisdom that went along with that time on our planet. So I am using it to really anchor in spiritual wisdom and bring that through for you guys here today. And of course, I've got my amethyst that I'm keeping mostly in the shade since the sun as I'm showing it out here to you guys. But this amethyst is, is a really powerful dude because um, of all of these ter terminate, gosh, my brain. I've got a clips brain, everybody. Um, the skies are getting dark down Missouri. These termin terminated points, I don't know why, you know what I'm talking about, the points on the end right there. Um, that's Those are the ends that send the energy. So all of the energy <clears throat> coming in right now, I'm sending it, just using those to send it out there. t Doves, loving my birthday, Larimar. Michael says he thinks that I would love Labrador rate in tangent. All right, I will check that out. I would love to. Wow, that's so cool. You didn't know that cool story until now, did you, Jerry? That's awesome. Yeah, charging up those those cool Lara Marstones that we have. Raja Shri, thank you for that. Yes, serves as a beacon and a transmitter. And storming in Minnesota. Minnesota. Awesome again. I and and I just want to bring our awareness again back to that the idea of um, all the co-creating that we're doing in every single moment. So just being in a state of presence, of joy, of peace, of happiness, especially during this time of this powerful electromagnetic shift. We're really helping to anchor and stabilize that energy of peace and unity for the planet just by being in that state of presence together, just by allowing those feelings to be flowing through our body, right? Let's go full screen on that as we get closer and closer to the moment of totality. Jose, how you doing, buddy? You are most welcome for channeling and anchoring in this energy. It is a pleasure and an honor. To be a beacon and a, a transmitter of this energy for you guys, it is truly my pleasure. <clears throat> it's nice and quiet here, so I'm losing my earbuds again. I know, what a great setup, right, Brian? Again, just thanks and gratitude to the awesome Brian Cable, the Cable family, Brenda and Jerry, too. 
really incredible. It has gotten it real. It has gotten real. It's like the it's animal. Like the animal. No dogs. Barking. No dogs barking. Cool. I just looked up and see about four dragonflies up there flying around. Michael asking if middle names have a purpose. Yes, every everything, think in terms of vibration, everything having a vibration and um, it's not bad if you don't have a middle name, but middle names do add to the vibrational quality of your name. Gwen giving us some shout outs. Thank you too, Gwen. Felt the shift really heavy last night, such a surge in your brain. Feeling almost overcharged. Yeah, it was crazy. My emotions were just like so under the surface, just like ready to bubble over. I was ready just to have myself a little cry. Just not releasing of the energy. Oh, Siraj, thank you very much. If you build it, they will come. We are building the Akashic Academy. And you guys are coming, sharing in this incredible space and this energy. Rhonda said, yes, it felt like being on caffeine. Yeah, absolutely. I found that the... Um, when we were having the energy of the... You yeah, cry a lot. Yeah, crying is good. Um, it's a good release of the energy. And I, for me, I don't mind being vulnerable and letting those things be on the surface. Um, it's, it's an expression of our humanism, and it connects us. And when I cry, it gives other people the space to have their emotions. I found it really hard to sleep when the um, full moon, when we had the full moon a couple weeks ago that led into the Lion's Gate portal. Whew, it was hard for me to sleep then. So hard for me to sleep. Thank you's coming in from India and all over the globe. Yeah, Nancy, we've got about 30 minutes as we move into totality. It is, it's getting very, very nice and quiet. Can you repeat 
We're now 11 minutes away from 11-11 here in California. Siraj says he wishes to hear the Akashic story of the solar eclipse, if any. Um, Siraj, I was just actually looking through Google right now to find some information to share about that. We need Bex we need to, Bex uh, to uh, stop the clouds. Stop the clouds. Bexy girl, Bex and Rhonda, you're on call. <clears throat> yeah, as we get close to this, this um, the ring of fire here, we want to have some clear coverage so that we can see this really good. There, there's an ancient legend that surrounds um, the battles that the Greeks were having in the 6th century BC. And it talked about this, this raging battle <clears throat> that was happening. Um, and then the solar eclipse began and it caused a laying down of the arms. Yeah, it is truly magical energies. Laying down of the arms and peace to break out amongst this time of intense fighting. Amazing, getting closer and closer there. It's going to be about it's going to be about three minutes total. total. About three minutes till we get to the total. You said, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have any limiting factors other than those that we create for ourselves, especially after this time right now. Michael, I believe in no limiting factors, and that's part of what this eclipse energy is really bringing in. All right, during the time when we get into this totality phase, I'm going to be very quiet. You guys are like, yeah, I don't believe that. I'm going to have to see it to believe it. It's going to be right at about 11.11 11 Pacific time. And again, I'm just going to invite everybody to during this time when we actually see and take in the totality, um, really recognizing to be in a state of presence, a state of calm, a state of joy, opening and receiving this energy that's coming in. You're welcome, Michael. Yeah, 
up from the city of angels. Really focus on just, again, that column of light, anchoring it deep into the planet. Peace, love, unity, and joy. Yes, thank you, everybody who's commenting. Peace and love to you as well. Oh, wow. Now it feels like here we go. getting waves and pulses of energy running through my body. It is turning dark. It is turning dark. Mm -hmm. Oh my dark. God. Oh my gosh. I know. Oh. Wow. My pendulum is going crazy. Everyone just focusing on the highest timeline for the planet, anchoring that in, being in that state of peace and joy, unity and oneness. Making sure to breathe fully at this time. Don't hold your breath at all. Yeah, there are lots of birds chirping right now.
show you guys here down in the corner of my pen. I've got my pendulum in front of my heart space here. Going pretty strongly. So much heart energy getting just bigger and bigger. The loop here that my pendulum is swinging. You know, you hear birds in the background. You do hear the birds. You know. hear birds and hear crickets. birds and crickets. Yeah. Oh, yes, 11, 11. Thank you, Rhonda. All right, everybody just who barely got it there for a second. <laughs> Big beetles buzzing around me right now. Everybody, Betty, see everybody just really anchoring in that 11, 11 portal energy again. We just had 11, 11. Yeah, we did. I looked, I looked down at Rhonda's comment and looked up and saw it right before it turned to 11, 12. Being in that, I was so present in that energy that so you can see my pendulum is just it's going faster and faster and faster. I have to put my arm down here in a second because my the lactic acid is building up in my shoulder. Like Nelson said, he's literally been vibrating since we began. I'm so glad that you guys are here. You're feeling this energy. How does it feel being in the darkness there, Brian? Um, it was uh, amazing. It was amazing. That, that, that's, that, that, starting that's starting to, to the lights came on. Lights came on. The birds started the singing. Started there. singing there. The crickets started. The crickets started. And that's all starting. And that's all starting. To yeah. Just no words to explain. Just no words to explain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nicole, there are lots of flying creatures around me where I am right now. Bugs and beetles and dragonflies and birds, and bees. Yeah, Sister Rhonda just really showing her gratitude for you, B. Thank you, Haley. Sending her love and light from the East Coast. And now it begins to move, continue on its path, moving, crossing the face of the sun. And we're going to sit here in these moments for a little bit longer, and then we'll do a meditation to anchor in this energy.
Yes, Siraj. In my opinion, just evidence that there is a creator of this universe, a divine creator. My opinion on um, moon ceremonies is go for it. Old soul, new soul. Oh, hello. Oh, my gosh. An amazing dragonfly. Oh, my gosh. That guy. That is probably the most beautiful dragonfly I've ever seen. His wings are so bright red. I'm just watching it until it flies away. Wow. Like, literally, it, it looks like, um, whew, it literally looked like a like a firecracker going through like it caught my eye like a sparkling red light moving through that was incredible um i am all about the moon ceremonies um and we do them inside of the akashic academy the moon represents cyclical energy and cyclical time and <clears throat> during the full moon when we have all the light of the moon coming and the illumination um Let's put Pino's comment up here. Wow, in 2035, the next, the next one will be a visible in um, Oh, you have a dragonfly with you too. Sherry says. Eclipse in the United States. in the United States. Brian, you cut out. Say that a little bit one more time. The next eclipse. The next eclipse will be will be. The next eclipse in the United States will be in in twenty twenty four. Twenty four. In twenty twenty four. Cool. And I and Rhonda shared this morning that in seven years she'll be it'll be visible in um, Canada. Ooh, ooh, big beetle. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, when they get really close, they freak me out. Ooh, he was such a flyby. Um, yeah, I'm all about the new the ceremonies. Back to the comment that Michael was asking about the ceremonies. So, um, pardon my little beetle scream. There, he got so close. Like literally, looks like right here. Yeah, yeah, Brian. At the cloud cover. The cloud cover. Now we're not gonna be able to see. All right, so we're not gonna be able to see a whole lot more of it. No. So I will go to there. And actually we'll do we'll keep it on for just a second. Be feel free if you if you need to go or to stop broadcasting. Um, Brian says the cloud cover now is rolling in, so we're not gonna be able to see it. Dude, how amazing was that? And for the cloud cover to happen and roll in to the point where we can't see it right after the pinnacle. Good grief. That was that was amazing. Um, ah, nice to see your face again, my friend. Thank you so much. Oh, my heart is just like filled with gratitude seeing your face again there. Um, I will go back and talk about the moon ceremonies. We'll get back to that in just a second. Um, wow. What was that like for you? Tell us a little bit about from being like in that space, what, what that felt like. Uh oh, we have. We, I think we have audio issues coming in. We can only see your lips moving, but can't really hear you. The audio is cutting in and out. It's probably the tremendous amount of energy that's there. So you can you can just smile and nod. Just smile and nod. Uh, yeah, that was that nuts or what, everybody? That was <clears throat> my good friend. He smile and nod. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My very good friend here, Brian Cable, and um, graduate of Learning to Read the Akashic Records. Um, yep, no audio for Brian, but that's okay. Brian is in, in, in that tremendous vortex of energy, so I'm not surprised at all that his audio is not available. Um, really, really incredible. And Brian is also the director of travel inside the Akashic Academy. He is putting together the retreat that we're doing in Sedona, as well as more retreats that we'll be bringing to you guys. Uh, and Brian is also a certified Akashic Records reader. So if you guys are interested in, um, oh gosh, I just looked down and there's a butterfly sitting right on, just right on that blade of grass right there that caught my attention. 
um, just giving giving it a little moment of my gratitude. If you guys are interested in a reading from Brian, his energy is attuned and very heightened right now, being in that vortex of energy. Uh, I would definitely recommend reaching out and scheduling a time where you can have your records read by Brian. Um, he is very, very good at what he does. And again, as you can see, such a generous soul showing up and sharing this space, this massive amount of energy with us. Um, before we go, I want to do a grounding in meditation to just really anchor this in and transmit it, transmuting it across the entire planet. So again, just bringing our awareness to that column of light and sinking it deep down into Mother Earth. Bringing our awareness to taking it all the way up into the space of the Akasha. And again, circulating, running our energy up and down this column of light. Recognizing each one of ourselves as the beacons of this energy, anchoring it into Mother Earth with these breaths, and sending that energy across the planet. Use my amethyst crystal here to just really transmute that energy, sending it across the entire planet right now. Anchoring each and every single person deeply into that crystalline grid, which allows us to send and receive all of this powerful wisdom and information. And again, anchoring ourselves, anchoring those telomeres of each one of our cell into the Christ consciousness grid, allowing the elevation of consciousness, the fully activated Christ consciousness, all 12 strands of DNA, fully activated, intact, functioning, allowing a huge, just massive shift in raising consciousness for the entire planet, grounding that in now to Mother Earth. And through that torrid field, imagine again that electromagnetic energy around your heart just churning like a giant machine, this giant piece of technology, connecting each one of our electromagnetic frequencies to one another, to both the crystalline grid and the Christ consciousness grid, finalizing all of this energetic connection, amplifying that for the entire planet, and anchoring it again, anchoring and stabilizing in these energies, sending that deep into Mother Earth. Good. Deep breath in. Exhaling. One more nice deep breath together. And exhaling. Awesome, Brian, thank you so much once again for being here with us. Um, I am going to just, yeah, thank you publicly again for bringing us this incredible experience. Um, I'm going to pull one more card for us from the Chakra Oracle Insight deck before we go. And I'm also going to invite you guys for the rest of the day, be in a state, as much of a state of peace and relaxation as you can. Um, no need to get any big projects started today. Just be in this space. Keep yourself centered and focused in that energy of peace and unity um, as much as you can today. Clearing the energy. And again, with this huge shift... Um, we've had this massive increase of consciousness. I am so excited to be bringing you guys a training tomorrow to teach you the basics of the Akashic Records. Um, every single person has the ability to access the Akashic Records. And now after this major shift in consciousness that we've undergone, I just want to personally invite each and every one of you guys Sign up for this um, this meditation, I mean, this online training. I'm going to send it, put it up in the comments right now so you guys can click on and be sure that you join us for that. It's going to be a very, very powerful experience and a fun experience. Um, always fun to hang out together and get some good laughs and some good upgrades together. Some of my Some of my favorite times are spent with my friends inside the Akashic Academy. More than my friends, really my family inside of there. We've become so much of a family. Woo, that beetle. Ah, you see him flying around me? 
It's just because that, that intense buzzing. I kind of like it, and it kind of freaks me out a little bit off at the same time. As you can see, I scream like a little girl. Okay, I'm going to put it here, right here on the feed, inviting each of you guys to join tomorrow for that awesome event. And then one more card for us before we go from our Chakra Insight Oracle. Just asking for that perfect card to close out our session today that we can take knowledge and energy with us as we move into the rest of our day and into this idea of the new earth, the 5D, right? Yep. Connection. Perfect. Universal oneness, interconnection, love and support. All of the, those those people on there that that's, that's the hand holding that we did across the across the globe together. They're all shining bright. Our beacons of light shining bright from our souls. Thank you guys so much. This has been an incredible afternoon. Um, I'm gonna just go spend some quiet time myself now. Um, do some grounding. Get something to eat. Drink some water. And um, namaste. Love every single one of you guys. Have a great rest of your day.